Hi. As you can see from the title of this video, I'm going to be telling my horror story working at. And um, basically, there's just a lot that went to it. I'm honestly really glad I left. I pray for everyone that is still there because. Um, I got my braids done maybe like two weeks ago. I'm gonna enter a picture of what it looked like when it was actually done and then you can look at it and see what it looks like now. Um, obviously it looks like I haven't been taking care of them, which is true because every time I put my do-rag on at night, it just magically comes off my head. So, uh, if you look up close, it just looks absolutely insane. So, I'm ready to take these out anyways and just... But anyways, while I'm taking out my hair, I'm going to be sharing my absolute worst experience at a job. And honestly, I feel like it should be told because the stuff that would go on at that store is absolutely insane. The stuff that is still going on, like if I told, would tell, were to tell you things that were going on at that store, I would not believe me. That was just the people, my the manager in specific. I didn't get me started. So I kind of wrote down things I wanted to touch based on because there was just there's just so much here and just just traumatic. I mean like it's not nothing to where it's like I have severe traumatic experience there. It's just like I promise you that had to be the worst environment I was ever in work wise. And I've worked like three, four jobs, three, four, five, five places. No. To start off, I wanted to tell you how I got introduced to the job. The place was being built literally legit right across from my school. And I was working at Publix at the time, and Publix was only scheduling me three hours every two weeks. And I know like that was not enough to support me, and it's not enough to support anybody three hours, but um, I get the reason why they were scheduling me three hours. In my case, they built a Publix legit right across the street from another Publix, like legit, no joke. And the reason they did that is because there were, I guess it was supposed to be a green wise, like an, like a, basically like a Whole Foods, but it didn't end up turning. So they just built a Publix literally legit right across from Publix and they were overstaffed. I don't know if they were overstaffed for real, but that restaurant was being built, fast food restaurant was being built right across from my school. And I decided to apply because my friend Ava, she, Ava, my friend Ava told me that she applied and got an interview back. And um, I was like, oh, I might as well just apply because I, mind you, I went to the website the pay said 16 to 17 an hour and i'm gonna try to find it because i feel like i took a screenshot or i can go back to the website 16 to 17 an hour so i apply of course because i did not make that much working out Publix, nowhere near that okay back to what i was saying i made nowhere near that working out Publix. so like i was like yeah i'm about to apply this place right across from my school literally could walk right across right across from my school to go to work every day i did I applied, I went for my interview, and first off, first red flag, like, interview and process was cool and all, but like, I promise you, it wasn't what it, hold on, I'm getting called. The interview itself was just, when to speak about, she, she, I don't know why I thought that it being a fast food restaurant like that, I don't know why I thought it would be as professional as I thought it was. I went in, and um, it was kind of smooth sailing. I told her that I was working at Publix at the time and I needed her to work around that schedule because I did not want to quit Publix because I thought I was going to keep the two jobs because I didn't see a point in quitting Publix. Basically, um, the interview wasn't all of that. It wasn't what I was expecting it was and um, there was no point in me um, not keeping public. So I, in the interview, I told her that she had to work, in order for me to work here, she had to work around my public schedule. Did she do that? No. I was sending her my schedule and she would legit did not care and would still schedule me the same days I worked at Publix and did not care about it. Yeah, that was just the first red flag when I first started working. Like, it was, it was cool and all. It was a new experience. I liked it because I was getting paid more. Mind you, when I told you that the website said 16 and 17 and that's why I originally wanted the job. I got that call back to tell me I was hired. They said I I oh yeah, we we're going to hire you and your starting pay is 1350. What? Because the website says 16. I was like, at that point, I, I was just gonna take it because it still was more than I was making at that at that point. I was like, 
it is what it is. So I started working there and mind you, I started working at a different store than what I was hired for because the store I was hired for was not built yet. So she was still the manager of her old store until she moved to the new store that I was originally hired for. So I was working at her old store and I liked the environment. The environment was cool and everything. The people who worked there, I had mutual friends with the people that, some of them, I had mutual friends with some of the people that worked at that store. So I liked the work environment, it was nice. After I started working for a little bit, they started telling me like the red flags about the manager. So I I was just ignoring them because like I was like, oh I, I like working here. I I mean they're saying all this stuff, but like I really I really don't think it's gonna be like that, you know, I'm gonna keep hope and then it started to get worse. So she started scheduling me more and more on the days that I would work at Publix because she didn't care. I would still tell her and she just did not care. I ended up quitting, putting my two weeks in, in Publix because I was like, they're giving me more, way more hours at this job um, and they're, they're paying me more. So I'm like, why would I stay here for nothing? So I ended up um, putting my two weeks there and I started working more at um, the restaurant. At, at Eventually, it, it just started going downhill. At the end of the day, when your employees hate you, they're not gonna want they're not gonna wanna listen to you. They're not gonna wanna do their job correctly because they already don't like working for you. So what makes you think by having your employees not like you and not caring about it would make them wanna work even more? Eventually my friends started working there. I got like my friends started working there with me. So I like I it I still even though I still hated it, I wanted to stay because that that's what motivated me to even wanna stay in the first place because I was ready to go at that point. I started working there in February and I stopped working there in May. In the three or four or five months that I worked there, I hadn't had one weekend off and I'm not kidding. Like she would schedule me, the only days that I had like a set schedule, the only days that I would have off were Monday and Thursday. Like I hadn't had a Friday, Saturday, a Saturday, Sunday, a Sunday and Friday off. I hadn't had two days off in a row. In months I had no social life I could I didn't even see my siblings that lived in Jacksonville I could I mean I was trying to choose work over social life and it was even hard trying to maintain from school like I would get home at like 11 sometimes I would get off at 11 on weekdays and I would have to wake up and go to school the next day like that it was stupid more and more red flags started coming up as we moved to the new store when it was built once it actually opened, everything just went downhill. We're not caring about people's, like about pe her employees in general, where you, it was starting to show even more because she had to run a new store by herself and it was just, even though she's done it before, I feel like it, I don't know, it was different than what everybody was telling me. I feel like it was worse. Then people started, people quit. People started quitting as soon as we were opening. And I honestly um, should have left then but I had nowhere to go. She will only do things that benefited her in the long run. And it just didn't sit right with me. So eventually I started getting, I wouldn't say more sporty at the mouth, but I just stopped caring because I'm not gonna let nobody treat me like that, especially Miss Five Foot. Miss Five Foot, I am not gonna let you yell at me when I'm almost 10 times your size. There's this thing called violating. And violating is when every four hours you get a break. and. Um, sometimes, most of the time, people didn't even notice that four hours up because in reality, that's the manager's job to tell you when you should be going on break. Us employees can be like, okay, we're clocking out, bye. You have to tell us when to go on break. He literally printed out sheets and sheets of paper each time we violated and was trying to tell us that it was our fault that we would sit there and violate. She made us sign a piece of paper and first to show that we wouldn't do it again. If we did, it wasn't her fault because she already had been getting in trouble because this lady would schedule us to 11 on school nights, 30 hours a week, 35 hours a week during school. Ma'am, that is illegal. That is illegal. And I never went to corporate about it because I'm not finna sit there. I'm not that type of person to sit there and just try to protest against, against this little girl. I'm gonna let her, I'm gonna let her, I'm gonna let her, I'm gonna let people, I'm gonna let the corporate get her. So she was getting in trouble because I guess corporate saw that we were violating for not taking our breaks and stuff. She was trying to tell us that we needed to go tell the manager when we needed to take our break. And she would expect the store to run so smooth when literally half the staff there was minors. After a while, I ended up getting fed up. At that point, I was just like, I, I was, I was, I was done. So I, I just stopped caring eventually. Like I stopped caring about 
not my job i would do my job i was actually really really good at my job because i had been doing it for months and because i promise you the situations that i had that i went through at that store set me up for any customer any fast food place at that like i the situations that i had been through like customers cussing cussing i had i have i have an experience that at my job customers cussing us out like that and don't get me wrong there is there was customers that like have completely been right but like i said she could never take accountability for things even if she was in the wrong so we would always have to the employees will always have to deal with the situation like we would get it, it would always get put on us to go and deal with certain situations like this the, the wait times at our store even though it was a new store at the old store it was bad too but just the way that they would go about things literally set me up to succeed in any job that i'm going to have in the future because it was so bad and another thing I want to touch on that I didn't mention in the video, I didn't also like how she felt like she could run the store sitting from her couch. Like she would call the store legit every 30, like not every 30 minutes, like every couple hours to like talk to someone or like just say something stupid to try to feel involved. In reality, she was just sitting at home on her couch. And I feel like she should probably get in trouble for that too because she wasn't there. She was there sometimes, but she would show up when she wants to. Even though I know how to do my job correctly, I started looking for other jobs and not only me, but other people were looking for other jobs because everybody was fed up with her, not just me. And I don't want y'all thinking it was just me thinking all this stuff because I promise you, it was 10 other people behind me too. So I started applying for jobs and the one job that I wanted to apply for is the job that I work for now. After like, I noticed that like I hated where I worked more and more every single day, not only because of her, but the environment that she used to create. I started work, looking hard for other jobs because who would want to stay there? So I started connecting at this other job. Um, I ended up getting it. So I got it. I had an interview. I got it on this Saturday. And later that Saturday, I worked at My plan was after I got hired on the spot at the interview, I was going to go back to tell them that I was putting in my two weeks because I was so excited. Like, you don't understand how drained that job has drained me. I pray for the people that are still there because you're still fighting every single day and I don't know how you do it. I do not know how you do it because you know how many mental breakdowns I literally have had in the back room? Like, it's so <laughs> After I got the job, I went to my manager and I was like, hey, I just got hired here, da 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 and Basically, she was like, okay. She was like, to be honest with you, if you want to put in your two weeks, you can just quit right now. And because other people need me need, need the hours. And I was like, I'm the type of person to always have a job. And I always, for months, I for in, in this situation, for months, I had a steady income. I would get paid every single week. Not having a job for those two weeks would literally set me back and um, make me miss on hundreds of dollars. I was not going for that. So what we made a deal was that ready to stop working there. I would be able to and she was telling me how I needed to keep two jobs in high school. Like what's wrong with keeping two jobs and like I wouldn't be stressed out and basically literally manipulating me into trying to keep this job because she knew that she was losing people. She was losing people and she didn't want to lose another employee. She was, she was trying to manipulate me into staying at and tell me that I can keep two jobs. I'm in high school and I know how to juggle it. And then the next day comes around. So I end up, by the end of talking to her that, that same Saturday, I decided that I was going to stay for two weeks and at the end of that two weeks, that was going to quit because what do I look like missing out on hundred dollars? You're not going to sit here and fire me and make me miss out on money. One thing I am is money motivated and I promise you, once it comes to getting that dollar, ain't nobody stopping me. She told me that I could basically quit whenever I wanted and give her a heads up in advance and I was going to. Whenever I wanted to, to make, give her a heads up in advance, she didn't say how long, she didn't say, she was basically saying whenever I wanted to quit, just give me like a heads up, meaning like a couple of days or like a week. And the next day, I went to work and she sat me down and was like, so um, she had found out how much I was making at the new job. And she offered me a dollar more than I was making there. And I was like, oh, I'll think about it. Cause you know, um, I can keep two jobs and summer's coming up and my availability become more open. Knowing I was lying because I was not finished there. Sorry, my dog came in. 
After the people, after all these employees are quitting, you, what makes you think that I'm telling you I want to quit and you, what makes you think I want to stay here? I was basically telling her that, oh, I would think about it and um, summer's coming up so I might be able to da 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 da. Mind you, my little sister on my dad's side, her birthday was coming up, not the Saturday that I went and told her I want to put on my two weeks, the next Saturday. So I had decided, mind you, I did not have off that weekend. The only days I had off that week was Monday and Thursday. And what am I going to do with that? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday rolls around. And I decide that, oh, I want to go to my little sister's uh, birthday party because I hadn't seen her in so long. And I haven't been able to hang out with them because I work every single weekend. I've been working every single weekend for months on end. One week off isn't as bad as two weeks off because I'll just be missing double that pay. So missing half that pay wouldn't be that bad in reality. I text her this. I say, hey, I regret to inform you Friday needs to be my last day. I thank you for benefiting not only me but my customer service career. Although I cannot further my employment here, I love to work and enjoy my time here. The job I'm choosing to further my employment with benefits me more than this establishment. Thank you for all that you've done. She takes it upon herself. Mind you, she's not at the store when I texted her this. She, and I, the reason I texted her this was uh, Friday was going to be my last day and I was going to be able to go to her party on Saturday. She calls the store. Mind you, she's not working at the store. She calls the store, calls the working manager, and tells the working manager to let me go. As all this is happening, it's 20 minutes into my shift. I had just walked over in the beaming sun, literally across the street to school, from school. I had just came out of testing for like, God knows how long. Like, and it's not even like testing, like all oh, little, it's state testing. I had EOCs. It was, I've been in testing for hours. I had to come to this little rinky dink job and stay until 1030 at night and then go to school the next day. 20 minutes into my shift, she calls the store and tells them, to let me go, and this is what she says. Or she says, okay, dot, dot, dot. I thought you were going to tell me before you officially quit. I said, this is me telling you I will still be working until Friday if you needed me. Because she told me when I tried to put in my two weeks that more people could benefit from my hours and that's why she was trying to fire me that day I put in my two weeks. So I said, because you told me other people could benefit from my hours. Then that's when the manager comes over to me and tells me, that, oh, I almost said her name. My manager told her to send me home. She texts me this. I can go ahead and remove you today. We are on labor. I got a question. How are you on labor? If you're already overworking these poor teenage children, and you're getting in trouble for scheduling these minors 35, 40 hours a week. You're complaining about how you have to cut everybody's hours in half because you're getting in trouble with corporate. How are you on labor? Let me know. Let me know. And if you were on labor, you wouldn't be trying to fire me then because you would need me to work. Then she texts, yeah, I meant like a week's heads up, dot, 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 but it's fine. Baby, that's not what you said. You think I can read your mind? Do you think I'm honestly telepathic? Because if I was, she sends me home 20 minutes into changing to these bright behind uniform colors. I look basically like a highlighter. I look, I look like a traffic cone. She got me bad. Like I was so mad and I was just so like stressed. That mind you, people are, people were, there's so many things going on. Uh, on top of this, like people are not even getting paid working 30 hour shifts, working over the legal limit. People are not even getting paid for many things. And then she tried to blame it on payroll and stuff like that. And it was just like, nothing can ever be her fault. Like, she was one of those people that literally would blame, every, even if it was like, it was, there was pure evidence that it was her, she would blame everybody but herself. My hair feels so, you do not know that feeling of when you take your braids out and you scratch your head for the first time, I promise you I send it into like my eyes that are really It's traumatizing on a level for somebody so young going into work in a place that just did not have their stuff together. I promise you, the amount of times that I sat there and cried in the back would shock you. Oh, like little things too. Like I promise you I'm not that sensitive. That's how bad it was. In reality, like, I just want her to come to the understanding that 
in the future, you just can't treat your employees like that. The way that people literally despise you is so unbelievable. And I'm the type of person where I would hate for someone to hate me that much, but she just don't care. And I was even telling them when I was leaving, if they got a different manager, I would go back. Eventually, they paid me more. If they got a different manager, if they were under new management, I would go back. All in all, I wish nothing but the worst for you because you put me through hell and I hope you get fired. Thank you for the opportunity though.